<laughs> Hi, everybody. <coughs> it's me, Natalie, from Creative Makers. Thank you for being here. Nobody's here yet, but they will be here. Um, I'm out in the desert again. I'm roughly two hours-ish from my home, and I'm here today with Carlos Ramirez. Hi, Carlos. Hi. Hi. Natalie. And you can, oh, and I forgot, you can either talk to me or talk to the camera. All right, cool. So whatever cool. you want to do. Hi, first person. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Um, okay. So I'm just going to ask you the sure. first question and my only question that I ask and then everything else sort of just happens from there. So I want to know what creativity looked like to you as a kid. What, what did you do? How did it show up? Creativity. Wow. I think out of boredom initially. And then once I kind of realized like the effects it had like on my mother to, to, cause I've been drawing since I was a kid. So when I saw her reaction, it was like, all right. So, like, <laughs> so you mean like you were making, you would make her things and give it to her and yeah, then she would yeah. just be, Whoo! right, right, right. And so she was really encouraging and kind of, it, it opened my eyes to art a little more. I mean, you know, as much as it could for a kid, you know? Yeah. And then, um, and sad to say, I had family members in prison that would send letters with beautiful art on it. And oh. that's when I started kind of like, okay, like, you know, what is this? And, and it kind of went from there. So what kind of art did they send on their envelopes? Um, was it ball point, ball ball point pen, pen or... that, that took like, like you had to be really disciplined to kind of, draw what they were drawing and sending home, you know, and it, and it, it just blew me away. It amazed me. And what a gift. Yeah, right. You know, that right. it would come in the mail just like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it kind of told a story, and I love telling stories. So so it was really intriguing to me. So did you go, I mean, did, were you the art kid in school? Yeah, I kind of hid it for a while. I thought. Oh, you were hiding. Uh, yeah, because because I grew up in a working family. They're like, yeah, you can't do that. You got to get a job. Like, don't direct your, you know, creativity towards that. And then um, but as I got older, I kind of started not to give a crap or you know, mm -hmm. what people thought, and it started coming out more. So did you? I mean, when did you figure out that you wanted to be an artist? I don't think I ever told myself I wanted to be an artist. I just did it. You were just an I artist. was just doing it. You were and, just doing it. And then, but I mean, uh, when did you decide to like make it your career? Uh, when I got paid for the first piece. <laughs> I hate to say that, but you know, no, I was like, okay. you know, I was like, wow, okay, like, like I can make a living doing this. And I started going to LA, doing obscure shows wherever I could, and then, um, and then. I was part of a collaborative and we ended up going to Marcia Goldberg's at New Image and it just blew up from there. So Okay, I'm gonna back up just yeah, a yeah, minute. Sure. So so did you go to art school or anything? No, I'm self taught. You're completely self-taught. Completely self taught. Self -taught. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you um did you have other jobs in the interim? Yeah, I, mean, I were there things that you were you were sort of in and, and working on art at the same time and trying to figure it out? Yeah, I had a nine to five, you know, here and there, but but I was always doing art when I started selling art or, or doing shows. I kind of started kind of leaning towards the art more until like it was consistent. And then I kind of just took a dive and mm -hmm. took that leap of faith and it worked out. Thank God. Now, how old were you when that happened? God, about like 23 or somewhere. Okay. There. So yeah. it was early. Okay, yeah, it, it was early. early. It was it early, was early yeah. on. Hello, extra people on there. Hi, Sandy. I can't see who else is there, but hello. Okay. Um, so, so then you were just mentioning that you went, you had, you were doing something, and then it blew up. So, explain to me what happened. Um, we walked in and and asked like what we had to do to show there, and and kind of so just it had a. Just, it was a gallery. Yeah, we, it was just we 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 literally walked in, and then she asked us, "Do you have any work with you?" And um. We brought some of the work we had from another show and it kind of took her back and she's like, you guys did this? Like, yeah. Uh, the next month she was having a show that we were included in and we sold out. So, so she's like, Hey, you know, like come back. So, so there was something that was ready. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That tells me two things. It tells me your, your work 
obviously was resonating with people and with the people that frequented your gallery. It also tells me that you probably priced too low. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, I remember getting... Because if it sold out, I mean, not that you don't want it to sell out. It might sell out even even a higher price, but usually that's... People are like, oh, this is super cool and it's affordable. I'm going to jump in. Right, right. Yeah. I remember getting my first $300 check and thinking like, damn, I have to work a whole week to get $300. Now, you know, I made it with this little piece that I did. And I was like, I thought I was rich, you know, but... I mean, you know, well, yeah, you were, bucks. and you are, <laughs> right. I, right? Rich in creativity, and, right. and this stuff just comes out of you. Right, right. Yeah. So then, so do you remember, like, what were you, what were you painting? What were you, are, are you only a painter, or do you do other things? No, too? I do sculpture. I do pretty much anything I can get my hands on. I like to experiment a lot. I'm everywhere. I'm mm -hmm. always, like, like right now I'm working on clay. Like, I don't know a lot about it, but uh, my friend Frank Lemus that I showed you his work, um, he's kind of teaching me and taking me through the, all the basic steps. I don't even know, like, the basics, but I love it, you know. And then um, I work with wood, uh, pretty much anything, anything. Anything that you yeah, can find. anything. Okay, so were you just painting in the beginning? Uh, the beginning. Like, when you, when you did that first show, was it paint work? It was a lot of drawing, uh -huh. like a majority was drawings and some painting. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we progressed, we got more into the painting. And, um, I'm curious about what you what you started painting or drawing in the beginning. Was it figures? Was it landscapes? Was it situational things? I think it was a lot of situational. Um, like I've always been into folklore or... or uh, romanticized stories or or sometimes it's a thought that comes in the mind it can be anything like like um and i let that dictate what the piece looks like or or kind of like i can find a piece of cardboard and it'll dictate a, dictate a whole painting so i kind of go with the flow like mm -hmm. kind of organic you know yeah or, or you know. tell me so Let's say, for instance, you find a piece of cardboard. I mean, how does how does it start? How does the train of thought start? Um, you know, I kind of I like to mesh like social issues with some something immediate. Like like for example, this. I went to the store to get a, a drink or something, and it says anything helps. God bless. It's a little sign that somebody would hold up you know, at a corner, right off the freeway. I don't know if everybody's got that, but I know we do. Yeah. 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 Well, he was down the local liquor store here. And so I bought it off of him and came back and started this painting because of that. Uh, you know, and it's a homeless person. Here, or, I'm going to have to, so people can see what we're talking about. I'm going to, so I want you to see what the work that we're talking about piece that we're talking about that he actually bought from the homeless person is right there and then do you want to talk about this piece a little bit and about how how it evolved is this are you did you envision this as the person that you you bought the sign from um it's just a general image like mm -hmm. like the idea of, of homelessness you know it's not a, a specific person or anything but um uh just a homelessness problem. The the it, it's so terrible right now, you know, that yeah. there are so many people that can barely, you know, the struggle of life. That, that's kind of. It's I know it's so hard. I know the homeless issue is um, so big, at least for us here in California, um, and I I know it's big in other places too. I right. don't I don't know if it looks the same though, because I mean here we we really got it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it bad here in India? Yeah, it's bad in some places. Yeah. Um, it's bad in Los Angeles. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen it. So then how, so, I mean, you just got your show by just walking in and talking to the gallery person and showing them some work. Right. And going from there. At that point, did she, wait, was it a she? Yeah, she. What Did she, was she like, okay, we're going to do this again. I want you to do another show or... Or were you like high off of that, and you were like, "I'm gonna go talk to everybody." No, no, we were high. <laughs> we were definitely high off of that. We were like, uh, um, 
And so we planned like a show and she gave us like half a year to prepare and we did it. And, um, and what happened is a magazine juxtaposed walked in mm -hmm. and like we were on the cover like the next month, I think. And, and that kind of boosted us into like another atmosphere, which was kind of crazy for us. Like now you say us, who is in this us group? Um, I was part of a collaborative called the Date Farmers, and uh, it's online. You could look it up, and um, and you could see who it is, and 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 that's where our journey began. <laughs> so the date, the Date Farmers. Okay, so then you were part of a group right, at this point. Right. Now it was only a two-person collaborative. Okay. So, so, so All right. So group. breaking out from this group wasn't so. So okay, tell me about how you did that collaborative work. How did you actually like work on pieces? Was it, would it be back and forth or were you both in there at the same time? Um, you know, it, at, in the beginning, it was more about reinforcing one another because there wasn't really a lot of art out here, like especially the type of art that we were doing. And so we found it kind of reinforcing to each other. And then it turned into like this harmonization that we just kept going back and forth. Like, like I would do a piece and, and, um, he would add something to it really random you know and it just we didn't know that it was going to work out the way it worked out of course not you know because I mean, you're just playing at that point yeah pretty much pretty yeah. much and um and it was more important for us to be happy to be happy and just kind of like love what we did you know and and, and we weren't like taking it too serious mm -hmm. like when it came to the actual work um but yeah that's kind of the way it worked out I like that you guys had a separate name for that collaborative too. It didn't wasn't just your name, right? Uh, but how did you come up with the date farmers? Um, when we started going to LA, we took uh, a box of dates. Yeah. And, and then people <laughs> that would go and they'd come back to the gallery, they're like, but where, "Where are those date farmers? Or how do I get a hold of the date farmers?" And at first, we <laughs> hated it. We, like, I'm like, I don't want to be known as like the date farmers. But, after a while it kind of grew on me and, and we realized like kind of represents a desert and like yeah like waves that we didn't even think about but and it stuck so you didn't even name yourselves that no other people did yeah. and you just took it right <laughs> yeah we took it that's hilarious yeah it took us like maybe a year to get used to it <laughs> yeah so. okay so then so you uh, okay so she gave you six months to put another show together right how many do you remember how many pieces you did for that show wow um i think it was well over 200 pieces wow yeah and it sold out yeah well that that second show didn't completely sell out but, but it was did, it, did it was went... close to selling out oh yeah. my gosh yeah and and but i have to mention there were smaller pieces they weren't like it huge, doesn't like this. It, yeah. it still doesn't matter yeah, they were more kind of like this so. yeah it doesn't it doesn't matter i mean pieces are pieces yeah but still true. Sometimes small pieces take as long as a big piece does, right, right. depending on what's I going agree. on. I agree. Yeah. So how long did you guys collaborate together? Do you still collaborate together? No, we, we you know, it was like a marriage, you know, relationship. Oh, and, yeah. and I think there was a time where, where we were kind of evolving in different directions. And, and I think it was time to... I kind of decided like it's time to kind of move on mm -hmm. and I, like head my own direction and that's what happened. How long after you guys made your big break there did that happen? I mean, did you actually collaborate together for like two years? 2016, years? like was the last time we. Oh, that's that wasn't that long ago. Right, right. That's not that long ago at all. Right. So during that whole time that you were collaborating together, I take it that you were probably doing your own stuff as well. Right, I was I was developing. I just kept developing what I was already developing. Yeah, so, but I mean, were you selling stuff with your own name over here on the side on, on the side, or were you only doing collaborative work up until 2016? Oh yeah, yeah, we were only doing collaborative work. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah, we were. So doing... then, so then, how did you break out in 2016? How did you get your work shown? Um. <laughs> uh. We kept, uh, I kept um, just developing it and experimenting. And I mean, did I, you I kinda, start knocking on people's doors too? And no, then? not for a couple of years. I kind of just sat back and didn't do anything for like two or three years. And then um, 
kind of slowly started getting back into it because I had to find a new space, you know, like, mm -hmm. that makes sense. A new mental space? You right, know? right, mm -hmm. right. New creative and mental. I needed to be like in a place where I was okay with. Mm -hmm. and, and until that happened, then I started approaching galleries again and, and that's what happened. So how, I mean, what was it like? I mean, if you're used to bouncing off of somebody all the time and now then you start not bouncing off of somebody. I mean, I don't know what your rhythm looked like. You know, you would do something and then you'd wait for somebody to make a move, the other person to make a move so that you could do something else. I mean, now you've got nobody making that move that you're going to play off of. What did that feel like? I mean, how did you get past that? Or was it just not an issue? Well, the formula has always been the same. So I just kind of retract and, and add or, or kind of move that formula around. So where it's kind of the same, you know, I, I, I kind of know every step to it. So uh -huh. it's not that hard to do. So, so for instance, like if, if you were waiting for the other person to make their move on the painting, you would just take it as a step back and like time. And then when you look back at it, you would just approach it as if, yeah, as yeah. if somebody had yeah. already touched it. Yeah, in a you, sense, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, the, right. You use that time element as the, as the component that became the constant. You know? Right, right. You did a little bit, turned away, looked at it again. Okay, now it's time to do some more. Right, that sort right, of thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Tell me about your style. Your style is really interesting. It's, I mean, we, uh, I, when I walked in, you guys, uh, the first thing I saw was this book by, um, about Basquiat, Basquiat, Basquiat. Basquiat. Yeah, that's probably it. Anyway, and I was seeing the similarities and seeing the influence of that work on Carlos or maybe Carlos's influence on. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> right? I wish. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, there's definitely something um, sort of robotic about your work. And I don't mean like robot did it, but I mean like the, the features, like there, it's, they're real boxy and yeah, wide. Yeah, they're kind uh, of boxy and wide. Yeah, and I'm just I'm just wondering about how you got there. Well, the wideness. I I I traveled to Mexico a lot, and and I went to a Mexican museum. I forgot what museum it was, but I noticed how the Maya like would widen a lot of their figures, or the proportions were always off, you know. But it kind of took it away from being human mm -hmm. and kind of like to this weird entity, but it was familiar to you. So you're kind of like, it kind of added a magic to it maybe, or for me personally. That's really interesting. And yeah. so I kind of started widening my figures. I used to do them normal. Yeah. And then I started broadening them and, and it just, I loved it. Like, and I, and you just stuck with yeah, it. I stuck with it ever since. But then also it reminded me of, um, as a child, when I would hear stories about like, somebody that did something bad or, or, or they were almost non-human and I would hear the story so much and then see them and they were like these big figures, you know, like grander than life. So, so I kind of try to make them grander than we are, you know, like, like kind of like a, I can't find the word for it, but like from, not from here, you know, but, but, but they are from here. Sort, <laughs> of, sort of like aliens living among us. <laughs> no, not, not quite. That's, that's kind of a little too far. A little too but, far out. Yeah, a little too far out. All right. But but more like uh um. To me, it's kind of like when I look at a gorilla, like they're so much like us, but they're not. Right. You know, and it's like it's magical. It's like an experience, maybe. Or I, I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to think, but kind of you know that makes sense or not. No, it does. Yeah. It does. Cool. It does make sense. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I mean you, your, your work is just so interesting to me. Like, when you started drawing as a kid, were you focused at all on trying to do, like, paint or draw what you were seeing? Like, actually seeing, you know, like, more realistic? Oh, definitely, definitely. So you were. Yeah, my mother would get me, like, books on, like, the Egyptians. So I would draw, like, the Sphinx or... Uh, I would redo a lot of the imagery mm -hmm. and then 
uh, like animal books. <laughs> like kind of, uh -huh. I copy a lot of. Well, I was stuff. just because I'm just wondering since you weren't since you were self taught, I didn't know I didn't know which direction it went in. You know, like some people don't ever focus on doing anything in a realist realistic way right, at all. Right. You know, learning how to draw a sphere, let's say, with all the shadows, right. and the highlights, and whatever else. Well, I hated that because I, I couldn't do it, so I hated it. Right, but. right, and and your work is very much not of that that way. It's not realistic like that, and not that it needs to be. Right, maybe that's what I'm trying to say. I don't want it too realistic looking. Okay. Like kind of on the surface, maybe a little more. More fantastic. Yeah, maybe. In a way. Yeah, yeah. I kind of exaggerated too, or, 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 yeah, I think, I don't know. Like you have me thinking now. <laughs> Let's see, remember when I, we talked about when I started this and I said, this is why we do these You know, things. I got to say as an artist, like, <clears throat> like personally, like I, I don't know the explanation to a lot of the stuff I do. Like there's artists that fix an articulate, oh, this is, you know, but I've never been the type to like, oh kind of put it into words I just do it you comes out it. and and that's what I'm feeling and, and and I think there's a lot of artists that find it hard to articulate it maybe maybe and, and I kind of do yeah. and the reason for that is I'm always learning yeah I'm always learning I don't think I will ever finish or stop learning I always notice that um when I'm talking to artists I mean a lot of stuff that happened to them as kids right ends up coming out in their work even as adults, as they're trying to work out whatever it is that's happened, good or bad. Right. You know, and and some people are very fully aware of them trying to paint this stuff out all the time. And some people are not aware. They're just, you know, they're just letting it happen right. as it comes along. Right. I, I'm thinking maybe you're in that camp that you're just letting it happen as it comes along. That maybe whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to paint out from being a kid is that, just... Yes, is yes. Just, you know, not realized yet. And and I think I think when we're kids, we're we're more in the immediacy of something like 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 a dog and a kid are always living in the moment. There, there is no tomorrow. There's no yesterday. There's no. It's just like oh, that's what interests me at the moment. And yeah. You know, like if they want to draw a dog, they'll draw a dog. And that's how I still kind of am. If I see an animal, I'll draw the animal like in my style and kind of. Like there's a, a there's something fulfilling about that to me, right? Like it, and as opposed to letting other things influence me that that don't need to influence me, I think if that makes sense. It does. I'm gonna ask you about a question sure. that we've already sort of touched upon, but I need to ask because I sort of pimped this <laughs> 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 that about you and your your relationship with Banksy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, I was like, everybody's telling me he knows Banksy. I don't know. All right. So, how did you how did you meet Banksy? What what were the circumstances? Well, we 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 were when we were still working with Marcia Goldberg, um, because we had spent a lot of time working here without showing in galleries for years before we even started approaching them, and then um and we get an email one day and it's from Ace Gallery in Los Angeles. And that's a huge gallery. And they asked us if we'd be willing to go out there and we're like, like who wouldn't, you know? Right. So we go and we meet with Douglas Christmas. And, and who's Douglas Christmas? He used to run Ace Gallery, okay. which is right in Wilshire. And then he has one in um, Beverly Hills also. Uh, and we see the gallery, we're like, wow, it's like this cavernous, huge. It's kind of intimidating, you know? And we're like, why is he calling us? You know, we're, we're still in that mentality. And then, and then he told us, he goes, I asked Banksy, like, who do you recommend I show next or, or I look into? And I guess Banksy knew about us. And we're like, what the? <laughs> you, know? you know, that kind of blew us away. And um, so we start working with them. And then one day, like all of his buildings were getting hit up by Banksy. And then one day we were setting up a show and, and he just walked in and started talking to us. We're like, oh, and that's how I know Banksy. Like, we, I'm not friends with him. But right, but, yeah, but you right, got to right, meet him. Right, I mean, right, most people sure. don't even know what he looks like. Exactly. Let's face it. Yeah. Um, what year is this? 
2015, I think. Okay, so yeah. not that long ago no, either. No. Wow. How did he know about you? Did you ever, ever ask him? I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I mean, 2015, there's social media. Well, we, we were, I, like, I was talking to a lot of artists like Shepard Perry, David Cho, um, like a ton of them. We were all friends. Like, it was like a, a circle of people we yeah. knew, and I think maybe through some of them or or because he was friends with a lot of them that that still know him to this day so wow i think maybe that way and then we ended up showing at one of his galleries in london like doing a print show with them and then an art show and it was pretty it was pretty badass so so you went into ace gallery and you had a show there right that's great we've had we had three shows with him like three humongous shows like Wow. Yeah. That is really incredible. You know, it's so funny. I mean, people are, lots of artists are just dying to get into galleries and get their work out there. And I mean, it, it almost feels like it was just, I don't know, it lined up for you. It almost feels like it was easy. I mean, you just made that one walk in. I mean, you were doing all the work. <laughs> I always feel it was the universe, you know, right, the I universe. Know. I mean, you're doing you do. all the work. You had all the work behind you, and then you just walked in, and you're like, hey, what do I have to do? And then it's just, here you go. Yeah, we didn't do a lot, a whole lot of that, but I think a big part of it was being prepared. Yeah. You know, like, like they say for that opportunity that might come along. Yeah. We just happened to walk to the opportunity, you know, so. Well, what do they say? Um, you, you Opportunity always knocks and you have to answer. Right. And you should be right, prepared. Right. And there's something. I, mean, I did not say that <laughs> saying right. I did not say that correctly. Um, <laughs> you know, let me see what people are saying. Okay. I did not bring my thing. I'm sorry. You have to see the top of my head. Let me see if there's anything. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, Sandy's just saying that she loves this piece. Oh, of cool. Here. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, Sandy Garcia, also incredible folk artist. Um, so were you actually, I mean, were you knocking on, on galleries, doors, looking looking for people to have shows with, or were they just coming to you after the first? No, we did a lot of um, small shows that people would invite us to. And, and like I said, we... We did a lot, lot of work here before we went anywhere, mm -hmm. and um, um, we would run a, a workshop. We ran it for around four years through grants for the high-risk kids out here, mm -hmm. and we were a little more focused on putting time into that before anything. Well, that's really that's really great. Um, did you find that the community? was receptive to what you were doing oh definitely definitely yeah um and i fell in love with it because a lot of the kids i met you know their stories some were sad some were you know like like i i felt like i couldn't leave it <laughs> like you know it was more important to me at the time and and um and to this day now as adults they still come up to me and like and remember everything i did and tell me oh my life changed because of art or, you know, you know, like I, I think art really works, you know, when it comes to allowing kids to, to express themselves when they can't, you know? Yeah. You know? Did, did any of your students in that program like move on to becoming artists themselves? Some of them did. Yeah. Some of them did. Isn't that great? Yeah. And I still talk to some today. Yeah. That is so great. And, and what were you teaching exactly? Were you teaching, did you say printmaking? No, no, just art, like, just, like, art in general, just, just workshops, and, and we would have art shows for them, and the families would come, and they'd show off their art, and they would sell some of their art, um, you know, just a simple kind of, like, great hands-on, you're yeah, right, yeah. right, right. It's probably the first time anybody ever took interest in them in that way. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm afraid to say that, but. Yeah, I think that's you know, I mean, they might might have taken interest in them, but maybe not like that. Not yeah, not to support art. Right. I mean, just like we were talking about, I mean, even you, your family was like, oh, don't focus on art too much, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, but, they. Yeah, I had some family that 
kind of was like, you're doing what? <laughs> well, you need to get a real job. <laughs> right. It's it's a hard thing to wrap your head around, you yeah. know, that art can support you. Yeah. Do you have any pieces in in here that were done by the date farmers? Uh, no, not in here. Not, not at the here. moment. The only thing I have is the Obama print that I drew for Obama for his 2008 uh, for his campaign. Yeah. And we ended up going to the Democratic National Convention. You did? Yeah, sure. But that's still date farmer era. Can you can can I'm that ready? be pulled out? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna show this to you. It's, it is super cool. And I know we mentioned Shepard Ferry, and I don't know if you guys realize that Shepard Ferry was the person that did Obama's posters when he did that oh, this, first run. Yeah, this was with Shepard. He's the one that invited us. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So here, I'm going to hold mm -hmm. it up. And uh, first of all, I'm going to back it up so they can see it. So this is the piece that we're talking about. It's got glass over it. Sorry, you guys. There's a little bit of a reflection. And I'm just going to bring it forward now. Um, so is this print? Yeah, it's a print. It's a print. Is it a screen print? Yeah, it's a screen print. And is it a one-off? There was 300 made. 300. Wow, 300 made. Beautiful. Were they sold or were they just hung? No, they were sold for, and we contributed to his campaign. Oh, that's nice. Were they hand pulled? Yes, I believe so. And what is this like? Four color? I, I, three color? I'm not even one, sure. One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. Three, three color, I think. Three or four color. Anyway, it's very cool. Yeah, cool. I'm going to give you that. That is super cool. Well, here, let's, and since we're up, why don't we, is this piece in process? No, you, we can, we can. Is it, no, that's okay. You don't have to. Oh. I'll move the camera. So we're going to talk about this piece. We're in his studio, by the way, you guys. Here, so tell me about this piece. What what is it made out of? What is it saying? Tell me tell me what you're doing. How big is it? Uh, this is two feet by three, I believe, or or three feet by four. Yeah, it's three by four. And I heard two people arguing, and I was thinking, how clownish is it to argue with somebody over petty things? And and that's when I thought of this image. But and I've always liked to incorporate like. Because our litter is in abundance, you Found know, and, and I like to pick up stuff and kind of give it like a new value. Um, like who would think that a can on the floor would be in someone's living room as a piece of art, you know? Right. You know, and so I kind of embellish it to kind of exaggerate it. But uh -huh, it's got glitter on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> and this one's called uh, clown beef. Clown beef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's two people arguing out here, so I was like, okay. See, the, sto I, the story is even better. It, it's not better than the painting, but it's just as good as the painting because I love having that backstory. How clownish is it to argue like that? And then here it is. Yeah, and he's arguing. Yeah. I don't know what he's saying, but... Well, and it's empty. It yeah. doesn't matter, really, There's right? another piece behind it. Oh, let's, do, let's see the piece behind it. Ah. Let's turn that around so that we can... And this is like in progress. Oh, is that how is that how it's supposed to go? Is it supposed to go to the side? Or yeah, I haven't decided if I want it straight up or. Oh, okay. Or, so and we'll I kind of like it like this more. So we'll look at it like this. Okay. And tell me about this piece. And this piece is um, can I cuss on here? Yeah, cuss. <laughs> well, it says "fuck you too." You know, and it's kind of the outlook on life. Sometimes, like I was thinking about how people struggle how some people don't care some people just take different attitudes towards life and 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 i was thinking how sometimes you got to just say fuck you too and just move on yeah you know and just and, keep going yeah now is this mostly acrylic uh it's acrylic spray paint uh oil pastel and like watercolor wow you really got it all in there thank you and then that's a found piece of, of trash right there? Yeah. 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 From the poppers. <laughs> oh, I love so how I, people ask me this all the time. I'm going to ask you this. How do you know when your piece is done? Um, I don't sometimes. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, isn't it? Yeah, I'm like, 
I don't know if it's done or not. So sometimes I walk away, and I think it's important to walk away from March sometimes. Like yeah. It's okay not to have to finish it or whatever amount of time it takes. Um, but usually when I'm like this one, I'm, I, I think like it begins with a simple image, and then you start layering. Mm-hmm. Like then you get to a point where it's okay, but I always kind of fuck up and add something else to where I need to layer it more. And then once it looks balanced, that's when I think, like, all right, maybe I can just leave it alone now. Do you ever have the thought, I always, for my own work in particular, sometimes I look at it and I think, there's not one more thing I can imagine adding that I think would give it any value. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like this, I I mean, I could, but I don't want to. You know, right. It's... No, I like it. Because there's really no point where... Like, what's to say it's finished, you know? Right. Right. And what's to say it's not? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Here, let's um, let's find a couple more things and have them. Mm. Do you want to move to this wall? Sure. Is that okay? Or I can bring another piece and sure. put it Sure, bring yeah. another piece. Let's see. We're getting pieces. His work is so cool. This is what George is saying. And where did he hold his workshops? Coachella. Coachella. And let's see what else. Inspiring, and I do believe that networking helps. It absolutely does. Art saves lives. This is Georgia talking. Yes, thank you, his Georgia. His work is very cool. Thank you, Georgia. And I, used, I like to use found objects also. And um, I'll show you the next one. But this one kind of had to do with good and evil. Yeah. And so I kind of drew like a, it's based off of a Mexican mask. But Now, is that your drawing? Right. That is your drawing. Right, right. That's an amazing drawing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And this was an old, um, it was a round ashtray. And I just tore it apart, opened it and framed it. What do you mean an ashtray? You remember the old round ashtrays uh, with the silver lid? Like they'd have them in groceries. Not well. I guess not. I guess I don't remember. I'm not much of a smoker. <laughs> yeah, they were everywhere. They're like just kind of round, like a cylinder. Uh huh. And they were big. No, yeah. like maybe. Like two three, feet high. Three feet, two feet. Yeah, or like this high. Wow. And so I pulled it apart and kind of did my thing. Yeah, because I was just going to say, I noticed that you made it into sort of a box. Yeah. it's. Yeah. And then he's evil, so he's saying, eat shit. <laughs> and let me, let me bring the other one. There's also grocery stickers. Here, I'm, I'm going to carry this over and just bring it over a little closer so that you can see. So it's metal, sheet metal, with this design from the cigarettes. And then... A uh, drawing that he did, added with spray paint, it looks like, and um, his little eat shit thing. <laughs> thing. Sorry, guys. And, and uh, a found piece of trash. Okay. This is part two. It's the good. It's, oh, so, the, okay, so that's the evil, and then this right. is the good. So these right. get, got shown together. Okay, this is, I'm going to move it here. Sure. There's a lot of. There's a lot of work here, so I know it's not completely clean slate to see stuff. So this, okay, so tell me about this. Yeah, it's part of part of that, the good and evil, and obviously, you know, it, it's an image of Jesus. Um, Again, you did this. Right, right. Yeah, I can see that. And then Jesus sees all, that's where it has that oh. element to it, kind of. The, the private property. I'm, 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 I'm like keep looking at that word, private property. Oh yeah, the reason private I use property. this, I use this because it, it's like private property, no trespassing. Like, and it made me think of how, like, we try to stay away from sinful things or bad things, and oh. and so I thought it was perfect. It is perfect. Thank you. It is perfect. It's funny because I was also looking at it in this way where, um, like knowing God is sometimes like private property. Right, <laughs> right. You know, and the way you see him, there's no trespassing. <laughs> no, but well, hit me where it says violators prosecuted. Yeah. It's like, 
you gotta pay for your sins and meet this guy. Yeah. Now, how long does it usually take you to do like pieces? Do you have a set amount? I know I know they all vary from from time to time depending on on the work. But I mean, are we talking like? You know, funny thing is like. Are you a fast worker, slow worker? I can be if I'm not acting lazy and like like the world's against me, but. Um, but what's funny is a small piece might take longer than a long, a big one. Yeah. And sometimes a reverse, like there's no, I think it depends on my own energy. And like this drawing, like took me maybe two days to draw only because I walked away from it mm -hmm. and came back and finished it's it. It's pretty detailed and it's pretty large. It's honestly. monotonous. It's, it's yeah. a lot of cross hatching. Yeah. Yeah. And what do we got? Should I bring another one? Or? Sure. Let's do one more, and then we can sit back down and talk okay. a little bit more. Here, do you want? Uh, let me see. <laughs> He's shopping. Oh, yeah, I know which one. His, his studio is set up sort of like, it's, is it a house? It's an apartment, sort of? It's, a, it's like an industrial building. Yeah, an industrial building. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of work here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff here. It's very cool. Mm. Okay. All right, let's talk about this piece. And this one here is kind of like, I was thinking of how, like the social climate, the world we live in, um, how it just is what it is right now at the moment. And, and like people are greedy, not everyone, but you know, right. it's just like, I see it. Like you cannot. It is a general. Yeah, you sense. can't help not to see it. So that's why I wrote greedy dog and then a guard dog. And then, um, but it's uh, a, neighborhood watch sign mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and i thought it was perfect yeah and that's a real ninja star i i was gonna ask you yeah. about that it looks scary to me <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's sharp yeah, sure. and that's richard ramirez the night stalker that's his mug shot or uh, well, it, that was the drawing of yeah the, when they were looking for him were right looking for right him. god that was a scary time yeah it was i hated that yeah that's what it is it's scary yeah it's scary and I thought that was perfect. Okay, so come 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 back. Come sit okay. down back with me. Let me try and get us both here. So what are you showing right now? Do you have stuff in galleries right now? Yeah, I have some in New York. Um not galleries. I'm not working exclusively with them. Like I said, I've been kinda just watching for now. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking to certain galleries now about getting serious, so so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> and then, are you do you sell locally too? I mean, or not so much? Not so much. Like I, I, I do okay, but not. How can I put it? Um. What What did you ask? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, are you guys. selling locally? I mean, do you have anybody out here that you have work? No, not not locally. No. Not locally, but that's in the works. That's in the yeah, works too? It is. Good. It is. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so what's inspiring you right now? I mean, do you normally work in a series or are you just like one at a time sort of guy? A little of both. A little of both. I do um like these were a series, um, the toys that I did. Here, hold on. Here, here. Got it. I'm here. gonna I'm coming up. I'll, I'll get it. Okay. <laughs> kind of dusty <laughs> so this so this are those real poppers yeah they are <laughs> so was this just a package that you redecorated right i work i work with uh oh no this is not a package you redecorated this is like a, a brand oh. new package that you made so oh I yeah made, i made it all I yeah made, you yeah, made it all right, right so so what and then so tell me about this piece and why? What were you doing? Because I, I do, um, I'm obsessed with toys, as you can tell, <laughs> like toys and like vintage things. And um, I worked with Dove Calamar that's out of LA. And he kind of started way back in the day. He used to work with George Lucas. And he started doing um, like Star Wars bootleg toys. Mm -hmm. And then he was a collector also. And one year he invited me to do like a bootleg and I was like why not you know but long story short he ended up giving me 
like a ton of these bubbles mm -hmm. and I thought I need to do my own like <laughs> and kind of started experimenting with them and and I got obsessed with these so I did a huge series a huge series yeah. of packaging I did like 20 30 of these wow uh-huh and these I only have like two left I think two wow. or three and um yeah but they're fun I like it thank you so um well, we, we'll get ready to close up here in just a sec. So where, where do you want to go? I mean, where, where do you see yourself? What, I know that you're experimenting with clay right now, but what are you hoping, how are you hoping to expand? You mean creatively? Yeah. Um, well, like right now I'm doing a lot of sculptural, like I'm working with a person who is a master at creating like ideas that you think of, you know, like I'm, I'm okay at woodworking, but this guy's a master. So I'm kind of like the master. He made that. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I want to get into more sculptural, more art and sculpture. If that makes more sense. 3D. Yeah. 3D kind of. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking big? Are you thinking small? Are oh, you, definitely thinking big. You're thinking yeah, big, like sure. huge. Yeah. Are you thinking like art installation type stuff? Yeah, and I started doing that, like, uh, uh, that piece back there, the car, and that truck there. They were for PBS, and... Can I? I don't know. Um, I don't know if I... No, I don't know if it'll move. Yeah, it's okay. Here, I'm going to I'm gonna bring you guys over here. Bing, 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 bing. Here, we're talking about this piece. Just so you have my hand in front of it so you see how big it is. So, so you're hoping to do something like that, but on a large scale, like on a human scale. Well, I already did it. You already did yeah, it? Yeah, I already did it. So this is just a replica of what you did? Or that was a proof of concept piece for PBS. They did their first public art initiative um, a couple of years back. And it was myself, a swoon from New York, and Rick Lowe from, um, uh, I forgot what state he was in. And... Um, and we fabricated a, a life-size box similar to that uh -huh. with the car in it. Oh <laughs> but my gosh. It, it touched on the whole immigration, the whole immigrate, like immigrants and kind of. <laughs> so you were thinking about, so you are moving in the direction of doing more large scale. Type right, art. right, right, right. And you're thinking clay is going to be the medium or at least part of the medium. It could be. It, could, it be. could be. Yeah, I'm not. I haven't thought that far yet into it, but yeah. but it could be. Are you a sketcher before you do stuff? You Are know you... that one. <laughs> I sketched it out because. I mean, like, but I hardly ever sketch. I just kind of. You start. usually just yeah, start. Yeah. But what about like for 3D sort of things? I mean, do you think about? I mean, what, what you're hoping it'll look like in the end, or you just are you just a person that just sort of like starts and you're like, I think this is how I want it to go. You have an idea, but you haven't. Yeah, sometimes it's it. really random. Like yeah. it's really random, and I just kind of get an image in my mind and kind of try to get it as close as I can to that image that I thought of, and then kind of start developing, get deeper, mm -hmm. and and. It's not always as close, but you know, yeah. works out. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. It is. Are you still excited about art? I am. I am. I wake up sometimes like, like I love the fact that I get to do art. And I'm blessed enough to be able to do art and yeah. make a living. And, and I, 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 honestly, sometimes I feel guilty. Like, not, not guilty, not in a bad way, but like, damn, I get to do this shit every day. You know, it's like, it's hard to explain, but. I I, I, but, I can understand it. You know, I think, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it, is, it is really beautiful. You know what I, I, I mean, to me, you are so accomplished. You've done you. so much and you are so, whether you know it or not, I'm sure that you, you do, but you just don't say, you're really a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I mean, honestly, you're a really a big deal. And um, you're so humble. You're so, you're so gracious about it all. I, 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 
like I said, I've been doing it since I was a kid, so I don't know what it is to be outside of that, maybe. I don't know. There's lots of people. I mean, lots of artists do it since they're a kid, but I, I mean, we're all different, and, and people talk about their work in different ways. You know, and right. Some people are very, you know, forward yeah, about, yeah. about what they do and their accomplishments. Right. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> I've right. Seen it. And that's kind of a turnoff to me, but, you know, I think the art personally speaks for itself for me, you know, like I don't, like if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I can't force you to like it. Right. I can't force you to think for me. Right. So I kind of take a neutral stance and just, you know, and it's worked so far, thank God. But Yeah. I, I, it makes me happy that you're still excited about doing art and that it hasn't jaded you in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think it's important to always keep learning and developing it and putting the time you need to put into it. And, you know, it, it, it keeps it in a certain place, I think, for me personally. But yeah. Do you have a goal? Like... I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, but if, if My, I was a finance person, I would say I have a goal of, you know, making $3 million in one year or something stu stupid like that. No, my goal is to die having done art the day before. I think that's my goal. You like, know what? I, that <laughs> is rather beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That just, that just, mm. oh. yeah, that just touched me. Yeah. I think I'm happy. I think most important for any artist is you have to be happy with what you're doing, you know, like you have to love what you do, you know, and even if you don't love it, you know, like, like try to love it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, you know, but. Yeah. I remember a teacher saying to me one day about, I was in pain and, and they were like, well, love the pain. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any yeah, sense. It, I don't want to love my pain, but, um, but it wasn't about loving the pain, loving how it feels. It's like it makes you feel it, alive. It's like if the baby, yeah. if the baby's name is pain, you're not you're not loving that it's that it's hurting. You're you're just loving it because it's yours. You have to try it's to be a, a beautiful witness, regardless, you know. And 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 like I, I remember growing up doing art. Uh, an elderly woman that was an artist, and. We became really close. She became like a mentor to me. And I remember being angry because I made a dumb mistake or something, you know, like being like, oh, I fucked it up or whatever. And she goes, anytime you make a mistake in your art or in anything you do, like focus on it because that'll probably be something that has the most value in it that you don't even know about, you know, and it. And, and uh, it's so true. It's That's true. a really interesting right. point. That's a really interesting way of looking at it. And, I always and, tell people, like, when they think they, they've screwed up their paintings or their drawings or whatever, screw it up some more. Let's right, see, exactly. Let's see what happens. Right, right. And now you have an opportunity that you don't have to be safe anymore. Right. It just you know, released you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she would say, always finish them. Like, even if you don't like it, finish it. Yeah. Finish it. And then after that, if you want to throw it away or whatever, or but, whatever, yeah, but finish it. But just finish yeah, it. finish it. Yeah, I agree. I agree yeah. with that a lot. All right, let me see if there's anything else I need to look. Miss having a shop. This is Clifton talking about about that. Uh, we talked about that. Oh, Kathleen's asking, and and you can answer this or not asking. How much do you sell your art for? Um. Sometimes it depends on the size of the piece where, where, or it depends on the size, not only the size, that sounds kind of weird, but, no, but the matter. time it took to make it or, or, um, but like this piece can go from like 15 to 20,000. 20, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were having a big debate about this. And I hate saying that. I'm sorry, but that's what it is, you know. No, no, like, it's fine. Don't, right. don't hate saying that at all. Um, we were having a big debate about about pricing work in the group, you know, and we were talking about, 
you know, there was there's a big contention about Jasper Johns oh. and and the big scribble pieces that he has, and I think they just went for like 3.2 million or something right. like that. And there were some people in the group that were very upset about that, and I can understand why, but you can also understand that he was like the first one to do it on that sort of scale. But the point is, he did it. Right. He, exactly. He did it. Whether it's a circle, a simple mark, he did it. He's the author of that simple mark or complicated mark or, right or... so i mean so we've had a lot of discussions about how to price your work and where to start you know and you can't always you can't always start at the big numbers you, you have to sometimes work your way up you have to take into account your market you know where are you selling your work i, I use the example of you can't have new york city pricing in gray bull Wyoming, right. you know, right. it's just not going to be there, right. you know, and we're talking small, much smaller scale. So, you know, that's all relevant. Thank you for sharing that because that was a piece welcome. of information. Uh, fabulous. My heart understands how his images are imagined. Wow. Thank you. That was Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. And hi, Dale. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Clifton says he misses having a shop. And Cy Twombly. Oh, that is... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Cy Twombly, that's it. It was Cy Twombly, not Jasper. Yeah, Cy Twombly. Uh, Cy Twombly. Yeah, that's, that's who the debate was about. <laughs> and uh, I guess George is in that camp. <laughs> no, I could see how people are like, you know... It's, it's hard, especially if you're the first person to have done it. You know, there might have been thousands, millions of people that have been scribbling on paper all, all their life, but they didn't, nobody made it public. The, you know? way, the way I see it, if, if it makes you mad or happy. It's still making something. It, it's effective. It, that is, it's, ex it's that like, is exactly what I was know? telling everybody. I was telling everybody, I said, listen, this piece that's making you so mad, it's doing its job. Right. It's making you talk right. about it. It's making you think about it. It's making you think about what it took to make it, or whether it was a lot of time or not a lot of time, a lot of energy, not a lot of energy. It doesn't matter. You're still talking right. about it and having it a conversation you know and it's interesting because i get messages from people like oh i love your art and, and you know it's always beautiful but i also get messages like your shit looks evil or or kind of but from normal people that don't do art so i'm like like what is it about art that's stirring it's that doing up its it's, job. it's doing something you know and then they'll go watch like violence on tv and they don't say a word or they'll you know hear like weird crazy evil things and like, well, they're cool, but when they see a piece of art, it's like... Right, and it, now it's not acceptable all of anymore. Sudden, yeah, yeah. It's like, <clears throat> well, that's, I mean, oh. obviously, that's always the person that holds that. Right. It's, it's their thing. Yeah, you know? sure. Woo! Yeah, that's... <laughs> all right. Well, we're just at about an hour. Right on. Yeah, right on. <laughs> that was a quick hour. <laughs> right, on the, right on the money. Yeah. Um, good point, George is saying. Um, all right, you guys. I, do you have any last parting words that you want to give these artists? Oh, be yourself. Be yourself. Um, don't ever compare yourself to anyone else. You know, that's the worst thing I think as an artist any of us can do. I mean, it'll bring you down, you know. And I think as artists, we're, we're, we're more open to... I think as an artist, you have to observe everything to be able to translate it. Yeah. And in being open, we let the evil in. Don't let that happen, you know? Yeah. Just love yourself and just be happy with what you get to do, what you're blessed enough to be able to do. That's my message. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. All right, you guys, have a beautiful weekend. Oh, gar uh, one more thing. Sure. I always used to think that I'd rather have people hate my work than be indifferent. That works. Yeah. That works, yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, have a beautiful weekend. See you all later. Bye. Bye.